Now, a variation of COPP, it is called Control Plane Protection, or CPPR. So it's a variation of COPP, it's very similar to it, but allows for better granularity. So what CPPR does is that it's going to split all of the control plane protocols into three subplanes, or sub-interfaces, how, how Cisco calls it. You're going to have the host sub-interface, the transit sub-interface, and a self-exception sub-interface. And now, before we go to the uh, to speaking, like which protocols are going to be covered by which subplane or which uh, sub-interface, I want you to know that it, this is this unfortunately heavily relies on specific platforms. So this may be different across platforms, which. What I'm trying to say is that you can never ever go in your network and implement, you know, CPPR because I stated that SSS, for example, uh, SNMP belongs to the host uh, subplane. Maybe in a specific, uh, in a specific, for a specific platform, in a specific code, that belongs to the transit plane or self-exception plane. In general, there is very few variations among platforms, but there can be variations and that's important because if you believe that a specific protocol belongs to the host sub-interface and it doesn't, then of course it's not going to work. So then the host sub-interface or subplane is in charge with, um, with protocols like SSH, SNMP, EIGRP, BGP, and any kind of tunnels terminated on the router, like VPN tunnels terminated on the router. Then you have the transit sub-interface or subplane, which is responsible with all transiting traffic, as the name implies, which cannot be self-switched for whatever reason, like, for example, a transiting GRV tunnel. So there are platforms that they do everything, for example, in, in hardware or, or in Ceph, but they cannot off offload in Ceph a GRV tunnel, for example. So a transiting GRV tunnel may be process switched by specific platforms, which means it's going to belong to the transit sub-interface or sub-host. And then we have the Ceph exception, which is going to, in there we're going to have protocols or traffic that is usually Ceph switched, but exception occurs, like for example, when fragmentation is being needed. So in general, an IP packet which transits the router is going to be self-switched, but it, because it has to be fragmented, then that's a self-exception because only the CPU can do the fragmentation. So there we go, it's going to be, that's a self-exception. And in here we're going to have common protocols which are, commonly we're going to have protocols which are handled directly by the interface driver, not by the CPU directly, which is going to be traffic like non-IP, which is ARP, CDP, and LLDP, or IP traffic like LDP or OSPF. So based on which protocols you want, based on what protocols you want to just block, not be able to be received by the CPU, or which protocols you want to limit the number of packets that can be received by the CPU, then you have to go ahead and configure a CPPR and, and do that configuration under the host subplane, under the transit subplane, or the self exception subplane. So you, you're going to in general use CPPR because it is better, it offers better granularity. Otherwise, the configuration is going to be the same, the same as COPP. So CPPR also makes use of MQC syntax with class maps, policy maps, and service policies. It's just a matter of where do we enforce the policy. While in COPP, you're going to enforce the policy globally. In CPPR, you're going to enforce the policy on the host subplane or the transiting subplane or the safe exception subplane, depending on which protocols we have matched and uh, uh, depending on um, to which subplane uh, is that control plane traffic being associated with. Is it associated with the host subplane or the transit subplane or the safe exception subplane? Now, as you see, the host sub-interface is going to be also responsible for the management protocols because they have SSH, SNMP, also TACAX is going to be in there, or RADIUS, 